Hi, my name is Robert Shelley with Shelley Law, and my law firm assists veterinarians and veterinary associates with employment contract issues. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about is 10 miles a reasonable non-compete uh, geographic restriction. So, uh, if you are a veterinary associate and you are an employee, or potentially been bought out uh, by these enormous <laughs> veterinary conglomerates gobbling up all the veteran, uh, you know, veterinary known practices lately, you are likely going to have some kind of non-compete in your contract. And so a non-compete simply says you cannot work within your specialty for a set period of time within a certain geographic radius uh, from where you work. So let's kind of break down the elements of that. One, uh, non-competes are enforceable in nearly every state. There are a handful of states where they are completely unenforceable. However, you should go into signing the contract assuming it's going to be uh, enforceable. I find that most providers for some reason think that all non-competes are completely unenforceable. And yes, maybe if it's absolutely unreasonable, but most states uh, find that a reasonable non-compete uh, would be considered enforceable. So the first thing you need to identify is whether your state recognizes non-competes for providers or not. Okay, so let's just assume, yes, you're in a state or it's enforceable. The non-compete is going to state you cannot practice in your specialty. You want to make sure if you're some kind of specialist and you do have multiple options, that it is specific to the task that you're doing for that employer. Now, if you're a general vet and it says you cannot act as a general veterinarian, okay. But maybe if you're in emergency medicine or urgent care or an animal hospital or something like that, you know, keep it specific to what you are doing. And then it will be for somewhere between one to two years. You, you wanna obviously keep it less. One year it would be considered reasonable pretty much anywhere. Sometimes they'll try to push it out to two, sometimes three years. I do not think three is a reasonable amount. So you would definitely want to keep it down to one year at, at most. Uh, and then finally, kind of what we're focusing on today is the geographic restriction. So is 10 miles a reasonable non-compete geographic restriction? I would say yes, it is. Now, setting is important. So if you're in a urban environment, uh, 10 miles can knock out hundreds of opportunities. Whereas if you're in a, a rural environment, there may be no other place to compete against uh, within 10 miles. So depending upon where you are, uh, if you're in a bigger city and there are dozens to hundreds of different practices you may you know, be able to work at after the contract terminates, then a smaller radius would be considered more reasonable. Uh, now, there will be employers that try to really push the limits of the geographic restriction and they'll do it in a number of ways one they could just really try to you know kind of stretch out the mileage 30 50 miles from your practice location that would not be considered reasonable in most places uh, two if they are a vet clinic that has multiple locations within a city they may say it attaches to every location that they own if you're not working at those other locations, it is not fair if that is included in your non-compete. So you want to get that removed and limited to the places that you just work. Now, what if you work at multiple locations? Well, one or two locations, okay, it could attach to both of those. But um, an employer may try to be sneaky and it states any place you've worked over the last 12 months, it attaches to, and maybe they have four or five locations. And so they might just try to place you at one location, one day per year to attach the non-compete to that. You need to make certain that they are not allowed to do that. And the easiest way to do that is just to state in the contract that if there are any locations that the employer wants you to work at beyond whatever the initial location was, there has to be mutual agreement. Uh, when is the right time to negotiate a non-compete? Obviously, before you sign the contract, you have no leverage after the fact if you sign an agreement and then come back to the employer. So you want to make certain that they understand uh, for whatever reason, the non-compete is not going to work for you. Now, for people that live in a city, they have kids that go to school, and they might have family in the area, 
and they absolutely cannot move after the contract is terminated, this could be the biggest problem with any kind of employment contract. Well, there are others who just move to a city for a specific job and have absolutely do not care because they don't plan on staying there if the job doesn't work out. So uh, you need to prioritize what's most important to you. But the non-compete certainly for a lot of my clients is the number one thing. Uh, and you need to make it clear to the employer, look, I I'm not going to accept this the way it's written. If you want me to, to work for you, we're going to have to come to some kind of compromise. And some will say, OK, and then others will say, no, take it or leave it. And then it's up to you to decide whether it's something you want to leave or not. Um, so is 10 miles a reasonable non-compete for a vet? For the most part, yes, it would be considered reasonable, uh, but you got to take into account all the other factors I just talked about. Uh, if you have any questions about your employment contract, please give my law firm a call at the phone number listed below in the description, or you can reach us through our website, ShellyLaw.com. And I appreciate you watching the video. Thanks.